Relations Board of Zoning Appeals. The meeting is called to order at this time at 7.03 p.m. The date is March 13, 2007. Our board consists of five members and an alternate, and the alternate takes full part in discussions of the board and becomes a voting member in the absence or conflict of interest of a regular member. This evening, present members are Greg Lavelle, Roger Gruzer, Gruzer uh, John Golzi, our alternate, Hector Flores, who will be um, an acting member this evening in the absence of Betty Hollow, and I am Muriel Frederick, the chair. We are also present our zoning administrator, Steve Pearson, Paul Eschenbacher, acting secretary, and Michael Miller from the city law director's office. The board operates according to the following procedure. The chair names and describes the case. The zoning administrator cites the specifics of the refusal. The appellant or a representative then will state the case for granting the appeal. Testimony next will be taken from those who support granting the appeal, then those who wish to speak in general comment, and then those who support denial of the appeal. Following all testimonies, the board will receive concluding remarks from the appellant. Discussion from the floor then will be closed. The board will deliberate and render a decision. Under Athens City Code Section 230703B, the board has the power to grant such variances from the code as will not be contrary to the public interest so that the spirit of the code shall be observed, public safety and welfare secured, and <coughs> substantial justice done. Athens City Code Section 230910C requires that variances from the code shall not be granted unless the board makes specific findings of fact based directly on the evidence provided to it that each and every one of the following six criteria are met. The first is practical dif difficulty or undue hardship. There must exist a practical difficulty or undue hardship caused by exceptional cir conditions pertaining to the specific piece of property. Exceptional circumstances. There must exist exceptional circumstances or conditions applying to the property or its intended use that do not in general apply to properties in the same zoning district. Third, preservation of equal property rights. It must be determined that literal interpretation of the code would deprive the appellant of rights commonly enjoyed by others in the same vicinity, while granting the variance would not convey a special privilege. And a minimum variance is number four. It must be determined that the variance is the minimum required to make reasonable use of the property. Number five is absence of detriment. It must be determined that the granting of the variance will not be of substantial detriment to adjacent properties, nor materially impair the purposes of the code or the public interest. And last, number six, not of a general nature. The variance sought must not be of a general or recurring nature, <coughs> such that the situation would more reasonably be handled by changing the law. Any person who's aggrieved by the decision of the board may file an appeal to the Court of Common Pleas. Such a petition must be filed within 30 days after the mailing of the board's resolution to the appellant. There's one case on the agenda this evening, number 0704V for 37 East Carpenter Street, zone B3. <coughs> Best of Athens Rentals is the appellant. The board is required by law to take testimony under oath. Anyone wishing to speak this evening, please stand to be sworn. Do you swear that the testimony you will give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Um, well, Steve, could, let's see, could you cite the specifics of the refusal here? <clears throat> My name is Steve Pearson. I'm the zoning administrator for the city of Athens, Ohio. Um, the case tonight was one that was continued from the last meeting. Um, the policies and procedures of the board um, indicate that if there will not be five members present, appellants have the right to continue their case, and that's what happened on, on this particular case. Um, the address of this property is 37 East Carpenter Street. It's a rooming, currently a rooming house with a permit for seven occupants. Um, it has six parking spaces. Um, in order to access parking spots off of Carpenter Street, you have to go back a normal single car wide driveway. There is um, an additional parking space at the rear of the property which is accessed via an easement. 
um, across an adjacent property. Uh, there's an easement that goes down between where the Wesleyan Church used to be on the corner and where the Athens Bookstore is now. Mm -hmm. So all those property owners down in there have cross easements to access their parking. Um, when parking was developed in there several years ago, uh, the owners of this particular property kind of capitalized on that and installed an additional parking spot. They had to build a fairly significant retaining wall uh, because of the slip prone nature of the soil right there. So they did the best they could <coughs> several years ago to get additional parking for this particular property. Um, it's what's called a legal non-conforming use. Uh, you know, most people call it a grandfathered situation. Um, the code requires a parking spot for each person now, each resident, so that'd be a total of seven. There are only six spots on the property right now. The house is up toward Carpenter Street. The lot drops off in the back down toward Fern Alley. So a lot of the lot is just this big hillside in the back. Uh, the reason we're here tonight is because council recently passed an ordinance and hopefully it was included in the packet of information that I gave you that basically says that anyone who wants to expand um, a building where there's some non-conformity, um, especially in this case, particularly parking, um, if they can't meet the parking requirement, they have to come to the board. That applies if they're asking for more people or more tenants or not. In this particular case, there's no request for additional tenants. They just want to maintain the permit that they have. The problem is that they want to expand a deck on the back of the house and build a bathroom. So right now, there's a bathroom in the lower level of the house down in the basement, one on the second floor. Um, so there are two bathrooms right now for seven tenants. Um, the housing code only requires one bathroom for every six people. But I was mentioned to somebody today, I hate sharing a bathroom with just my son. So most people don't want to share a bathroom necessarily with anybody right now. Um, but in this case right now, you have seven people using two restrooms, um, two bathrooms. Um, if there's a problem with one, you've got seven <coughs> people trying to use the same bathroom. So the only thing that's being asked for tonight is to expand off of the back of the building, um, build an additional bathroom and then expand the outdoor living area for the for the tenants um, I don't know if you went up there and it, looked it at says it. in here that in case they do not specify any specific use of the property you the zoning administrator will decide the number of parking based on a similar cases so what was the basis of your decision that they have to have set um, could you Reference that section for me. Yeah, because this I'm is section 230801C. The second paragraph says, in the, in the case of any use or combination of uses not specifically mentioned herein, the zoning administrator shall determine the number of required parking mm -hmm. spaces based on similar or comparable use. Right. This particular situation is specifically listed in the code, and that's the section that requires one parking spot for each permitted occupant. But the use wasn't specified though. I mean, they didn't say they want to increase more people or? Um, I think probably what you need to do is look at the section of the code that I refused it on also to give a little context to why it was refused. Um, yeah, and that says same. if anyone wants to expand a structure, um, even if there's no request, request for increased occupancy, they have to meet the park requirements. So it's very easy for me to go to the park requirements and note that one for each permitted occupant is required. I'm not about to determine that six spots are okay for seven people if they just want to add a bathroom. Essentially. It's a little unusual. I think it's unusual, you know, that because you have to add a bath, if you want to add a bathroom, you have to meet a parking requirement. But that's well, they haven't to specified why they are adding the bathroom. There is no use that they're not going to add people. They just want to add the bathroom. If you look at the section that I referenced, it says any expansion of the structure, any enlargement of the structure requires a review for parking. I have no so option the deck, to... So the deck is what the, is this expansion. The, the actual bathroom is not going to expand the... It's not going to re, um, require bumping out anything. It's just... The, the existing deck that's there, um, that square footage will become part of the bathroom. 
Uh, and I then see. there's a of request course. then to essentially everybody. compensate for that loss of deck area by extending the deck further out. Yeah, they're going to. This will not increase their, they're not asking for an increase okay. in more people in the building. That's correct. And they're not asking, and it's not going to do Wonder away with the parking spaces, parking spaces parking right? Spot. That's correct. No. So right now there are six I mean, stacked parking spaces. Mm. Um, um, another variance that's required is in that particular zone, every parking down, spot has to be accessible. I mean, so I the refusal was based on two things. In order to meet the parking requirement, you have to have one for each permitted occupant, and each of those parking spots has to be accessible. I don't think so. So there's two variances. Yes, one essentially I for, so. as I said earlier, the single wide driveway. Trapping in other cars probably. that requires a variance in this particular zone, and, um, and for lack of, lack of one parking spot, ingress, but there is well, no request for increase um, in the occupancy. Well, it's it's non, it's, it, it comes from here. It's just the way that the, the uh, it's the way the code's written. Mm -hmm. um, it the requires street. a hearing by the board, and mm -hmm. that's why it's non-accessible. Well, those are all stacked. Yeah, they yeah. are all stacked. This is a grad, completely grandfathered stuck. thing. We were just looking at the at the <coughs> diagram no, here, and um, Roger was asking about the access to the parking places seven, that are there currently. Two not. And basically, it's all two stacked are parking. For right, all the parking spaces are accessed via yeah. that driveway, yeah. Yeah. except for the one that I mentioned. That's down that's over the down hill, below. down over I mean, the hill in the back, and accessed. Like, like, um, over the easement yeah. with adjacent property owners. Yeah, that's a big drop down. Okay. Um, and the the code was written the way it was written specifically to address this sort of thing. The idea was that uh, you would ultimately hope that houses would come into compliance rather than become less compliant. Parking's a big issue. Um, this revision is a fairly recent one, um, not part of the 2001 revision. Um, so council has recently addressed the issue of parking. I think what they wanted to do was make sure that if you were expanding a building and the parking was non-compliant, even if you weren't asking for more people, was there an opportunity to actually increase the parking? Um, in this particular case, if there was an opportunity to increase the parking, to meet the park requirement, the appellants wouldn't need to be here tonight. I see. I think, as I had mentioned, um, a large portion of the property is on a very steep hillside. They have already in the past gone to great measures to install an additional parking spot that wasn't even required. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one that's down off the back. Uh, and that small grassy area is going to be completely covered by the deck, I, 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 it seems to me. That small grassy area would not at any point have been appropriate for another car to be parked. Um, my is understanding there, is that there's not parking there right now and no, essentially you're just going to be trading deck area for gra grass area for deck area. Right. That's what it looked like. Okay. Does anybody have any additional questions for Steve? No. No? Right, no thank, thank you. you. Then it's uh, the appellant's turn to make their case. Who, which of you is going to come and speak for us? When you go to the podium, would you state your name for the, um, for the record? My name is Caroline Thomason. I'm property manager for Best of Athens Rentals. And your address? Our address is at 35 and a half East Stimson Avenue. Thank you. Okay. So what would you like to tell us? I believe that Mr. Pearson covered everything quite thoroughly. Um, I don't have, we have pic pictures of the property if that would aid in any more other than the diagrams. This would just demonstrate the steep hill behind the house. Let's see. Let's see. This would be the left side of the house just showing you that. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Showing our next door neighbor. This would be the driveway. So we really have no other room to expand. And then this is the parking spot we've created at the bottom of the hill. Keep putting your car out there again. What is the intention of uh, this addition and the extra bathroom? What is, what, is the, what is the 
the philosophy behind it? Um, really just to lessen the hardship of seven people using two bathrooms that are on uh, opposing floors. This bathroom would be located on the main floor of the house. Would that be a full bath? It would be a full bath. And the deck? The deck is out, safe outside space that is flat. The rear of the house is on such a slope mm -hmm. that it gives them safe outside space so they're not on the street side, they're in the rear of the house. They might want a barbecue to replace that big fire that they put on their lawn in the backyard. Did you see the burnt space in the backyard? In those? No, it's not. It's un under the snow. You can't see it. Uh, t today, when I went up to see the house, it looked like there was a large burnt space in the backyard on the grass. We'll go by tomorrow. <laughs> you might want to, uh, if there does get a deck put there, they need to be aware that they can't set those kinds Absolutely. of fires on a deck. Absolutely. <coughs> so basically, this is for the convenience of your patrons or your, or your rental. Mm -hmm. You're not asking for an increase. You're just asking to put the bathroom in. That's correct. We're not asking for an increase in occupancy. Pretty much everything to stay same other than to allow us to do the addition to the bathroom and the extension of the deck since we're losing that area. Did the people who are renting request at this or is it just yeah. your idea? It was pretty much our idea. One picture shows me coming. Yeah. Bedrooms are there in the house. Are there seven bedrooms? There are seven bedrooms. My goodness. Mm -hmm. And it's being operated as a rooming house, I guess, is what Steve said. What makes it a rooming house rather than just a, a rent? Six or more tenants. Six Any or more tenants is by definition a rooming house. I see. What about the unrelated or related? Is that has to be totally unrelated or? Um, boarding house um, is permanent resident residency for non-transient type people. The state really doesn't get too involved in familial relationships. Mm -hmm. um, they just looking at the number of tenants in the building. Rooming so house is something. really as far as that's concerned too. I don't know in a rooming house setting, the city would be able to distinguish between. The people were related or not, we just total up how many how many people were living there. Um, the family relationship thing is more applicable in R1 and R2 settings. In R3, where and higher, where this is a 40 house of permitted use, this property happens to be located in a B3 business zone. Rooming house is a permitted use. So we're not talking about a non-conforming use or anything. But, but there was no slack cut for rooming houses when they, um, when they made the, the ordinance. Rooming houses had to have as much parking as in B3 as any other kind of accommodation had to have in any other. One per right. resident. Right. It used to be that the parking requirement was one and a half um, per unit. Mm -hmm. And for rooming houses, it was one for every two bedrooms. Yeah, okay, that's what it when was. When the parking requirements were changed, it just went, doesn't matter what the use is, one tenant, one parking spot. So it treats all those uses the same in terms of parking. Mm -hmm. In a way, you kind of got a break on a rooming house before. Yeah, well, rooming house is a, yeah, it's something that isn't as, as frequently done anymore as it used to be. It used to be people just didn't have cars at all when they lived in rooming houses. But, okay. A little digression. Didn't Goldsbury rule that the fraternities and sororities uh, that were being investigated by the police as a rooming house and each room was individual? I thought he made a determination on it about two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm not sure okay. about that. That sounds like it could be correct. Um, kind of a comparable thing that I might want to point out too is um, we have the billing system that we have the code enforcement office. For rooming houses, we bill by the room. We treat that room differently than we do the unit. Mm -hmm. So if you have one, two, or three people, um, we're actually in an R3 zone or higher, up to five people, we call that, that's a unit. It's billed by the unit, $90 a year. 
in a rooming house situation, we build by the bedroom. We treat rooming houses a little differently. And I want to say it's 25 bucks per month. It's $25 per bedroom. So we do differentiate between rooming houses and units. The unit, the unit total number changes when you hit the R3 zone. Right. It goes from three to five. Okay. okay. But in any case, when you hit six or more, no matter what zone you might have to be in, that's a rooming house. And that's a state definition. Okay. That the city of Athens has that coincides with state law. State doesn't have any specific requirements on uh, numbers of bathrooms for per tenant for rooming houses or anything like that. Debbie. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, I don't have any additional questions at this point, I don't think. Does anybody else? Is that a full bathroom in the basement? Yes. It's shower, a, tub? It's a shower, not a tub. And then the other bathroom? Has a tub with tub shower. And then the addition would be a full bathroom with a tub. So this it seems like this house is probably already as completely occupied as it's possible for it to get. The, adding a bathroom isn't going to make it, is not going to increase the population density in the house any. Um, Certainly make for a healthier environment. To have to yeah, it would seem to me too. Pleasanter. Um, okay. Well, I haven't any further questions, and it seems that no one else has either. So, thank you very thank much. You. And um, is there anyone else present this evening who wished to speak either for the variance or in general comment or against the variance? No one else had been sworn, but. All right. Well, are we ready? I think she's had her yeah. opportunity to speak, and there's been no one to speak against it. So we could close the uh, floor and begin to deliberate on this. Are we ready to do that? I just want to follow up on the comment you just made. <coughs> if we deny the variance, uh, everything is going to stay as is, seven yes. people. But this addition of the bathroom, uh, maybe just an addition to the property and the occupants, so. It would certainly make an improvement in the quality of life of the occupants of the property. Mm -hmm. The, um, and did anyone else get a chance to go up to see the property, or were these, did you have a chance to really look at mm -hmm. the photographs? Um, the backyard is really quite little, and if they do take out the deck, there would be no deck space, no place other than just that backyard. I would think that, well, let's do the deliberation, then we can, I can decide what I think. Somebody has to move. Well, is anyone prepared to make a motion, to oh. craft a motion for? I'll do it. Um, okay. I move to grant a uh, variance to the property at 37 East Carpenter Street, uh, Best of Athens Rentals, Case 07-04B, Zoning B3, from Section 230801C to permit extension of an existing deck and addition of a bathroom, where such addition requires seven accessible parking spaces and six, two accessible, four non-accessible exist. Is there a second? A second. Okay. All right. Then we need to consider what the practical difficulty or undue hardship is with this property. I think seven occupants and two bathroom poses some hardship. Well, it's a hardship on the tenants, but as regards to the property, I would say well, that the, the difficulty the would be the shape of the property itself but just you know it's it's there isn't a lot of land around the building uh, uh, that exists for parking and that's the parking is the problem they've pretty much 
apply themselves to uh, providing what parking can be provided on that lot. They're, that little handkerchief of land in the backyard isn't adequate to provide any additional parking. So that is, an, that is a practical hardship. A lot of places in Athens have that kind of situation. And also in special circumstances. Mm -hmm. It would be in the same zoning district. I don't. There may be other properties that have difficult parking, but their particular situation with the, their their land going pretty much. Well, they're not trying to expand their number of tenants, uh, so the parking is normally related to how many people are there, so we wouldn't have any concerns in that regard, would we? Uh, it wouldn't seem that they'd be able to expand it too much beyond what they've already got in there. Okay. Um, so if the parking was adequate to, before we gave them permission, I assume it would just continue to be adequate, because you'd be dealing with the same amount of tenants? Well, I, I think the parking isn't what I would consider adequate, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be possible to address it any further. Um, the only thing that you could do is reduce the number of tenants by one, and then you'd be, you still wouldn't be, however, absolutely to code because the uh, requirement is that they all be accessible. So it, we're, we're right back to the, the circumstance of the property itself. Um, however, how about the preservation of equal property rights? Do others in the same vicinity, would granting them the, the, the right to add a bathroom without adding a, another parking place, would that be something that was not equivalent? Well, considering that they were already grandfathered, so it would not be any additional privilege that they are receiving. Good point. You won't be impacting the parking at all by doing that. Hmm. How about minimal variance? Is this the minimum required to make reasonable use of the property? I think this is the most minimum I've ever seen in the last eight years on this board. Is it really? <laughs> oh, I've seen some more minimal things like this. However, um, making reasonable use of the property as a rooming house with seven people in it, another bathroom. I mean, frankly, I don't know why we even discuss this because, you know, they are trying to improve and, of course, it's the law and I understand that, but it seems that it should have been automatic. You think this is a no-brainer, do you? <laughs> Call the question. <laughs> well, let's go through them all because we're supposed to. So, mm. the ads, would there be any detriment caused by... Um, Putting a deck on the back of this house. No. No. And putting a bathroom. Unless the new bathroom overflows. <laughs> well, no, I, I think that it can only be considered an asset for the people who are living there. Mm -hmm. But for the neighbors, I can't see that there would be anything detrimental in an additional bathroom or in a deck space that would be just somewhat of an expansion of what's already there. They're already using the backyard for their bonfires. Um, the um, and not of a general nature. Uh, you haven't seen this. Uh, it w is this variance something that would be better handled by changing the law? No. Not a bathroom. No. Well, it's, the bathroom is only a problem because they have to because they have to expand the into the. Um, they, they actually have to expand the, the house. <clears throat> if they were going to take a parking spot by doing that, why then I think it would be a, an issue with this. Right, but not, it's not really changing anything. No. Okay. I only have one more question for Steve. Um, okay. If this people come tomorrow to your office and say we want to have eight people, uh, do they have to come back to us again, or, or is this automatically they can get maybe eight people, or? Well, I'm sure that uh, parking would be an issue, but... Right. Anyone who owns a property that's in a zone where a rooming house or request rate tenants is allowed, 
um, as a, by right, can do that. Um, they could come in and tell me they want to spend quite a bit of money on building a big retaining wall in the back and expanding yeah. the parking, and you'd never, it wouldn't come to the board. Okay. If they That's, if they pr were able to provide the parking for an, an, an yeah, additional some, tenant, right. someone can provide eight accessible parking spaces in a zone where a rooming house, eight tenants are permitted, that's automatically permitted. That's but a if, use permitted by right. Right, but if they could it. not provide another parking place, they would not be able to, yeah. to get another tenant. Right, they'd back, be back in here asking for the same variance. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. right. Okay. That's why this one, I think you, you recognize it too, it's a little unusual. And the reason I had to bring it is because the language doesn't, it says mm -hmm. with or without increased right. request for occupancy. Yeah. I think the whole idea there was to, if there was an ability to expand the parking, you had to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you couldn't do it, you could come to the board and appeal for hardship based on mm -hmm. you know, the land itself. So if anybody else comes in, and I might have someone come in and say, um, I have seven tenants and six parking spots, I want to add a bathroom. Um, but that should be okay, Steve, you should be able to make the call because I'm not asking for any more tenants. Well, they might have a huge backyard mm -hmm. where they could put in parking. So I'm not automatically just going to say, sure, just bury that parking you know, on my say-so. Um, it one gives us a chance to review the parking issues. Exactly. I think that was, and I think that was the purpose of writing it the way it was written, was that we would mm. review it. And I think right. we have. It does make it. It does restrict people who have grandfathered parking um, from considering expanding the footprint of their building. You know, if they go beyond the existing roof line and they don't have the right amount of parking, they're going to be at the board asking for a parking variance. Now, administratively, we have given allowance for um, reconfiguring inside an existing footprint of the building, for example. I have uh, four units in a building with two in each, total of eight tenants. I want to turn that into two units with four tenants. I still have eight. I've changed the number of units. But because that section talks about enlargement, if there's no enlargement, administratively we've said parking's not an issue because you're not asking for more people. If it was interpreted that any change inside the existing structure required a parking variance, you would have, you'd have probably four of them every month or more. Thank you. Because if you looked at that strictly, there would be no remodeling going on inside buildings to try to upgrade premises without an appeal for parking because there's a lot of properties that are deficient in parking. So well, rather than completely discourage remodeling inside existing structures, administratively, we've made the determination that since the ordinance says you have to actually be expanding the footprint of the building, those are the only ones you're going to see. And this is the first one you see. Yes. And is okay. by far not the first remodeling in Thank town. You. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Hopefully that explains that. It does. Thanks very much. All right. Then are we ready to... Call for the verdict? Yes. Why don't you start? I vote no. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 And I also vote yes. So you have your variance. Thank you. Thank you. Now, then, the only thing that we have, we only have a couple of other things to do this evening, one of which is to um, approve the minutes from last month. I was not here last month, so I wasn't able to. I wasn't here, but I didn't even get it, so. Oh, and? We didn't get a package from me this time. So no one has read the minutes from last no. month? No. I think well, then we don't get to approve the minutes from last month. Never right. mind. I think what happened, normally I deliver a packet of information, mm -hmm. but there was no additional information for this one. Right. Um, let me ask the question, too. What Paul's been doing, when he does the minutes now, he puts them in Word and emails them to me. Could I email them to you in the Absolutely, future? Absolutely, sure. Sure. Rather than you know, print them out and, mm -hmm. and distribute them that way. I've been sure. doing that with the agendas um, also. Um, without there. a scanner, I'm not able to scan all the information and email it to you. I still have to mail or, or deliver those packets. But you that's don't have just a scanner in no. your office? Really? Um, I do, but it works at such a rate that I'd have somebody standing there for quite a while. 
scanning all of those. Um, why don't we try it that way on the minutes from February? What I'll do is I'll email you the minutes from February and those minutes from tonight, and we'll, we'll try it that way. We'll see so how it works. That'd certainly be a lot more convenient. And then so we could just read them. I didn't even know you had email. My wife does. Oh. Does she read the minutes for you then? Yeah, I'm sorry. She I, just delivered because I didn't email. deliver a packet. I didn't hand deliver printed uh, minutes this time. And well, I, I just assumed I email. hadn't got anything because I hadn't been here. But um, all right, then let's I'll get you both of them within the next couple of days. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then we aren't going to do that. Um, but we need to. Um, yeah. For the record, before the meeting began, we had some discussion about. Um, the training session that we're trying to set up, and we're going to see if we can possibly make arrangements to have a um, session with Gary Hunter um, after our meetings, but we'll find out maybe next month. Um, and then our organizational meeting for 2007 has to happen sometime, like, how about now? Uh, I nominate that, uh, I'd like to nominate you to continue to be the chair. <laughs> If you're uh, why don't we um, give the I opportunity for nomination. everybody else to have an opportunity to prove that the nomination is <laughs> All right. So um, would either of you be interested in no. taking a turn on this? And I gather that neither one of you is interested in taking a turn on this. I don't think Betty does. Um, as long as you all understand <coughs> that I am periodically out of town. That's fine. We'll and, share that yeah, responsibility. And we can keep on doing it the way we've done it. It's fine with me. I'm happy to keep on doing it. Oh, with that being the case, I don't think any other organizational things, but we'll discuss next month after I've talked to Gary Hunter's office about what the possibility is of having that org that meeting about training. See, after. We'd, we'd have two hours tonight and get yes, out here before we can. Yeah, we could have. Yeah, could have worked. But if he can't do it on a two weeks notice, the, the earliest Steve will know how you know how many cases we have is about two weeks prior. So. But we'll work something out. I, I found it very, very helpful. The session that I went to, I had to go to Lancaster, as I mentioned. And it's been years ago now. Um, but I did find it very useful. And I think all of you would, too. It's very, very interesting to get the background on the reasons for our code and, um, and how we can best support it. So anyway, well, that's it then. This was done for some by the Lancaster Board, Board of Zoning Affairs? Uh, you know, I don't re even remember who the sponsoring agency, what the la sponsoring agency was, but it might have been. I, ask, I went with Joe Grizzly. She might rem recall. Yeah, but Steve's got Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve. Um, one thing I would like to mention, hopefully you received in the mail the outline of Mr. Hunter's presentation. Uh -huh. um, yes. And in speaking with him and with Mr. Miller, if you do have any particular questions, you can always contact Mr. Hunter directly for individual questions. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody got that outline that Mr. Hunter was prepared to present. Mine I, came in the mail. Mm -hmm. I will have to find out where mine went because it obviously came while I was still out of town and it's not on my desk. Okay. Well, just let me know. <laughs> I've, I've got a copy and I can get you another one. Okay. Um, and another thing I would like to announce, too, is there's still an opening on the board for an alternate. Um, I've had several inquiries from members of neighborhood associations if the position is still vacant. It has been vacant. And you have had inquiries from neighborhood yes. associations. Well, But no one stepped forward yet. Uh-huh. Well, I actually <coughs> have spoken to a couple of people but haven't seen anybody show up either. So everybody... Yep. Who knows anyone who might be interested? Sometimes people step forward when they're encouraged to. So, if you can think of people who might be good to share this, we've announced it at these meetings this. for several months. The mayor's announced it at a press conference in the recent past. So, there still is one vacancy for an alternate. If everyone in here is, the terms are uh, uh, current. No one's about ready to expire, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I think, who expired most recently? We had a discussion Mine, probably. Yes, Roger but you got, you, right. got re, you got re upped looking right? Looking good, though. Yeah. <laughs> For an expired we, we, person, you look pretty darn good. Thank you. <laughs> the other expired term was Mr. Shaffey, because he had actually taken, he had moved from alternate up to a regular member, uh -huh. so he assumed the length of that term of the person he replaced. That term ended, 
but he's no longer a member. And so that was the other position that expired right. um, January well, 31st. He moved or something, didn't he? I, I believe that he moved. Yeah. So that makes it a little hard to come to meetings. So. Well, anyway. Please we, put the word out that Yes. Any, anybody who's ever been interested in, you know, in these kinds of things. You don't announce it in the paper. It's just an announcement that needed the board. Well, uh, the mayor's press, press conference weekly. And it's right. He's mentioned it. Um, I suppose, too, I could get with uh, Scott Thompson and Ron Forrest at the government channel, and we could run it on okay. Channel 15 also. Well, that's a good idea. So. But, again, I, some, I think sometimes the personal inquiry, if you can think of somebody who you think is good at it, um, yeah, asking them might be the best way. So. Yeah. And you don't have to jump right in. As an alternate, you get to... Uh, Someone willing to, to make their yes. neighbors and, and friends alternate. angry at them for nothing. <laughs> you get the parking pass. It was stated in the paper that we do have... Yeah, we d yeah it was even in the paper. Park. But some controversy about that, I suppose. About the parking well, the pay The pay is not very good, but we do at least get you a place to park without taking any change out of your pocket. And once a year, maybe I, a dinner. No, no. You get to I've, I've never been fed. Oh, well, oh. Right. It's well, once about five it, it years ago. It generally happens when I'm not in town. So once every one five year, years. one yeah. year I got invited. The first year I think it was. To the city dinner or somewhere? There we, it is. we actually we don't have a, we have an employee That's appreciation funny. luncheon now. It used to go to employee appreciation banquet that we had in the evening. Um, now it's done in the daytime. Okay. I see. We have we have lunch at the community center. Yeah. Well, I don't think you'd be welcome here to come. I'm like sure if you want. We're starving, so. <laughs> Can live without that. Not okay, well, if there isn't anything else, then I think we're adjourned for this evening, yes. Okay.